What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Broadway Joel, the voice of Dominican Box. And if this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. So everybody's super excited about the Spence Crawford fight happening. And everybody is saying, well, not everybody, a lot of people are saying that the winner of that fight is going to be number one pound for pound. That is absolutely false. That is not true. Now, first of all, we have a fight happening a few days before that actual fight, and that's Stefan Fulton versus uh, Nao and Nue. And I believe Inoue is going to win. He is currently my number one pound for pound fighter. And if he beats Stefan Fulton, he will most certainly still hold his position, regardless of what happens that Saturday. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Spence and Crawford are great fighters. I'm not going to sit here and say that they suck or that they're not good or that they're not worthy of being in the conversation. But to make an argument for them to be over Inoue if Inoue gets his win over Stephen Fulton, I think it's uh, quite honestly ridiculous. Uh, Crawford's best win is maybe, you know, Postol, Jeff Horn, Sean Porter. I, I don't know which, which one of those is his best win, but it, it doesn't move you as of right now, right? You know, uh, uh, let's say Spence's best win, what is it? Danny Garcia? Sean Porter, Kel Brook coming off a, you know, a knockout loss to Golovkin where he got his face broken in. I, you know, those wins, you know, don't necessarily move me. They're not terrible wins, but when you look at the body of work of somebody like a new way where he's knocking, you look at his, go look at his box wreck and you look at the first round KOs, second round KOs, third round KOs, this absolute dominant run that he's ran through. It's almost insane. And then the one fight that he had that went to decision, it was a 12-round decision. Yes, he did get his eye socket broken. Uh, and yes, he did get hurt a few times. But I only gave Donair three rounds. Three rounds. And he dropped him. And then they re go. So he dropped him, right? Beats him. Donair leaves. Go gets another belt. Comes back for a rematch and gets KO'd in the second round. Like, that's the type of run Donair has done. You get what I'm saying? And now he's moving up to, to, to 122 and fighting Stefan Fulton, who has two belts already, who beat Angelo Leo, who beat Brandon Figueroa, who beat Danny Roman, and is now going to fight Inoue. Like, yo, we, we, we got to give some respect to these lower weight guys. And even if we want to take it a step further, and, and, and let's talk about Usyk, what he did. He won every single belt in his undisputed run in the other man's home country. He won the tournament. The, the, the Actually, both uh, Inoue and, and him won the World Boxing Super Series tournament, running through the best in their division. And not only did he win that tournament, he won against the Russian, being a Ukrainian, in Russia. When you add context to how these guys are winning these you know, fights, it makes it a bit ridiculous that you make an argument that these guys should be over Usyk or Inoue, no matter what happens on Saturday. And by the way, I'm not done with Usyk's run. Usyk then moves up to heavyweight, fights Joshua in his hometown after winning every single bout at cruiserweight in another man's hometown to go to, uh, uh, undisputed, goes to AJ's hometown, beats him, rematches him in a neutral ground, then beats him again. There's this one win of Crawford or this one win of Spence is not enough for me to put you over the body of work of these two guys, man. I'm sorry. Listen, uh, Spence and Crawford are great fighters. I, I, I a hundred percent agree with that. I, I, they're most likely future hall of fame is definitely Crawford considering he was undisputed and he's had a quite a long run at welterweight with, where he's had a lot of knockouts, but being honest, the resumes just don't match, don't match. And especially when you add into context Inoue's dominance of KOs, especially how early they are, no way you can put them over him. No way. I'm sorry. Listen, I know this is a topic that maybe a lot of people may find like, oh, this is so, you know, like blasphemous. This is this can't happen. But just because you're not familiar with the lower weights don't mean that those fights don't count. That, that's all I'll say. If you don't know and you go, hey, man, I'll take your word for it. I disagree, but I don't really watch the lower weights, you know, and you leave it at that cool. But don't sit here and comment and make a whole paragraph novel as to why you think 
the winner of Spence Crawford is number one pound for pound when you haven't even watched one fight of Usyk or Inouye. Please don't. So like I said, man, Inouye is currently my number one pound for pound. My number two is Usyk. That may not change. And I still haven't made my decision as to number two. That may not change come July 29th. But all right, guys, that's my video. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe and like button to support me. If you want to buy a Dominican boxing shirt, go on broadwayjoel.com. Go buy a, a Dominican boxing shirt. Also, follow me on Instagram at broadwayjoel. Follow me on Twitter at underscore broadwayjoel. All right, guys, Till next time. Peace.